Hello and welcome back to my RC channel, I'm Andy RC and today I'm going to be checking out the Diatone Taycan Cinewoop. I've tested a lot of these guys now and people keep asking me if the Taycan is the best one, so let's see how it stacks up. This is the 6S analog version, but like a lot of these Cinewoops, it's available with 4S motors and the DJI Digital FPV system. My preference with all of these Cinewoops is to get the 6S version and then run a 1300mAh 4S because for most cinematic situations you don't need 6S power and they run much quieter on a 4S LiPo. Then, if you need the power, you can use a 6S LiPo. At a glance, the frame looks fairly typical of these types of models, but this one is actually quite a bit different. So, rather than having a top and bottom plate sandwiched between standoffs and foam, this one actually has a separate main body, meaning that the protector plates are replaceable without having to take apart the entire thing. And rather than using a 3D printed material inside the protectors, they have used a molded plastic, which looks much neater and more premium, even though this is one of the more cheaper Cinewoops. And everything can be bought as a spare part, so it's all replaceable. But my favourite thing about the frame has got to be the camera mount, because so far all of the other Cinewoops that I've tested, apart from the Flywoo Chasers, had the camera mounted in TPU hanging from some standoffs, which almost always caused Jallo in the video feed. The separate body allows for these Gap RC style aluminium front plates providing ultra camera protection, but at the same time a solid carbon fibre mounting solution for the camera. This does come at a slight cost in terms of weight, but not by much. The model's dry weight, including the GoPro mount that I made, is 312 grams. Then, with a 1300mAh 4S LiPo, it comes in at around 475 grams. Then lastly, with a Hero 7, its all-up weight is 595 grams, and with a Hero 8, it weighs 600 grams on the nose. Now, if you haven't watched any previous videos on these 3-inch Cinewoops, then those figures might sound alarming. But the lightest one of these that I've tested so far with a Hero 7 came in at 548 grams, and most of them sit around the 560 to 600 gram mark. So I think while they could have made this model a little bit lighter, I think that extra carbon and camera protection is worth it. You're also given two straps. One fits around the LiPo and the other is long enough to fit around my GoPro Hero 8 and the 3D printed mount that I made on the channel a few videos back. You have to buy the mount for your camera separately, but I think that makes sense because we aren't all using the same cameras. They give you some grippy material to stop your LiPo throwing in a crash, which I've also used to grip onto my cameras. The motors are the 1408-2800kV Mamba brand using the Gemfan D75 props. And they don't protrude outside of the protectors, although you are only given one set of props. Then the stack for the 6S version is the Mamba F35, which consists of BL Heli S 4-in-1 ESCs rated to 35 amps with what looks like a genuine Panasonic 35 volt 470 microfarad low ESR capacitor attached to it. The 4S version uses the 24 amp ESC board, but the flight controller is the same F405 Mini Mark III on both models. They give you a 90 degree USB adapter to access the beta flight settings, although I found this one to be a little bit awkward as it goes in underneath the frame, and the other end is a USB type C port, but I'm sure everybody has one of those these days. Just like most Diatone models, the beta flight setup needed some work. It came flash with version 4.1.2 and they had motor stop turned off and no air mode at all, which is a bad combination in my opinion, especially as they only had arming set up in the modes tab. So if you tried to fly it out of the box, it would be pretty unstable. So I've added angle mode on the auxiliary 2 and a lost model alarm on auxiliary 3 using D-Shock commands. I'd like to say that they had come up with their own PIDs, but I'm not sure changing the roll P gain by a value of 1 counts as changing the PIDs. And their rates were too docile for me with a velocity between 300 and 375 degrees, so I've changed those to my liking. 
They haven't set up JESC either, but on the upside, there are four spare UARTs if you want to add anything else. And the on-screen display is set up nicely, although I'd probably add the VTX channel info for when I'm flying with other people. This is the plug and play version, so I've added an FR Sky RXSR. There's a nice 3D printed mount that has two holes for dual antennas, but I had to pinch these straws from a GEP RC model. It looks like the mount will hold a Crossfire antenna as well. The VTX in this one is the TBS Unify Pro, but due to supply issues, if you buy one today, you will get Diatone's own Mamba TX400, which is power switchable via smart audio up to 400 milliwatts. But just like the Unify, it comes locked out of the box to 25 milliwatts. So to unlock it, you have to hold down the button on the VTX for 5 seconds while plugging in your LiPo. There's an LED on the board which always flashes when the VTX VTX is locked and it goes solid when unlocked. And the antenna is a right hand polarized Foxia lollipop antenna. Lastly, the camera is the 4x3 aspect ratio Runcam Nano 2, which might seem like a strange choice because they have had to use a micro to nano adapter, but it's a camera I actually really like. They give you the usual bag of spares which includes a physical buzzer but there are no instructions so you will need to be familiar with beta flight to get it in the air. Okay let's go for a line of sight flight with this guy. I'm just in angle mode. This is just so you can see what it sounds like and what the punch is like. Already I'm hearing it much quieter because this is the 6S version but I'm running a 4S Tattoo 1300 milliamp lipo and it's not by any means quiet but it's quieter than the 4s version with the 4s lipo and what's great about that is if you want the extra power for any reason you can go up to 6s but i'll just show you a punch out on 4s and you can see there is plenty of power there just on 4s a little bit of a wiggle on the descent bring it close so you can hear the power but I'm finding that I'm not having to completely shout over myself it's still not quiet by any means but I feel more comfortable flying it indoors and it's less intimidating let's try acro mode yeah it's fine not hearing any oscillations I have to say previously I have liked this prop look at that even on a 4S, when it's meant for a 6S, it's doing power loops no problem. Yeah, it's flat calm here today and performing nicely. And then of course if you do want that extra power you can put a 6S on there but not really needed in my opinion for the job this guy's going to be doing which is smooth cinematic footage so let's take a look at some flight footage straight away i'm mega impressed with the video feed it is squeaky clean with no interference or jello whatsoever on this very sunny day and i'm only running it at 25 milliwatt here because i didn't unlock it hopefully the tx400 is as clean as this and if it's not then please let me know in the comments the only thing i experienced which you will see later is that i went for a stall type dive and there was a bit of a snap that it did on its own when entering the maneuver but i think that's because i'm using a 4s lipo here and it needs more power from a 6s to do that type of maneuver the only other issue i found was that the current meter wasn't accurate which is usually the case with most diatone models so i'd probably remove that information from the on-screen display but the flight time was really good at around five and a half minutes and the footage from my gopro came out great so apart from the setup it does its job as a cine whoop but is it the best one well, I actually don't think there is a best one. They all do what they are designed to do. And perhaps I'll make a roundup video of them if they stop making new ones. So I'll leave you with some flying. And if you wish to buy one, then I'll put a link in the video description as well as a pinned comment. And as always, thanks so much for watching. Please continue to subscribe. Cheers.